Okay, one type of question that you might encounter is something like find all the numbers at which f is continuous. Okay, for now, we're going to treat this question as find the domain. Okay, and we got to figure out how to do that. We have to figure out what is the math behind finding the domain. Okay, mm -hmm. so let's do some examples. All right. Um, first example on the list: three x minus five. Over. 2x squared minus x minus 3. Mm. In some sense, this is the easiest possible thing. Mm -hmm. uh, what we need is the denominator not equal to 0. In other words, we need to take this guy, factor it. Uh, so I'm going to do this. First of all, I'm going to zoom out a little bit and give this a little bit more room. I'm going to ask where is 2x squared minus x minus 3 equal to 0? We shall cast those points aside. How do I answer this question? Well, now I've got this business going on. Mm -hmm. We know there's a 2x over here and there's an x over there. And about five seconds, you can figure out that uh, this is a plus one and this is a minus three. Yes. Right? Yep. Okay. Uh, so the answer to the question, where is 2x squared minus x minus three equal to zero, is uh, x equal to negative one. And positive But really... Three. That's what we want. Yeah. It's not equal to negative one. It's not equal to positive yeah. three. Uh, over two. Over positive two. Three, over two. three have two. Um, Forgot about that. And I'm well. We're skipping this part. Two x minus three equals zero. Two x equals three. X equals three over two. Mm -hmm. And of course, the other one's even, even uh, easier. Easier. So x is not equal to three over two. Now, how are you? in translating this information into interval notation. Pretty good. Okay. Would you draw a number line or would you just do it? I mean, I could do I mean, you know, drawing a number line never hurts, but I mean, I, I know how to do it. Okay, uh, well, just... I'll just draw a number line for sure. the sake of you drawing know, a number maybe line. Maybe the viewer will be benefited. Uh, I'm drawing big fat holes mm -hmm. because that's where they're not. Yeah. So, um... It's uh, going to be negative infinity. To I'm write it, write it nice and big. Yeah. Domain of f. Yes. Equals uh, negative infinity. Negative infinity. To negative one, non-inclusive. Negative one. And then uh, union uh, negative one to three halves, non-inclusive, and then union three halves to infinity. Keep having to zoom out. Union three halves to infinity. Yep. And just to be clear, um, each of these pieces, one, two, three, corresponds to one, two, and three. All right? Uh, if he gives you this one, it's three points, right? Um, let's shift gears and do one with like a square root that's trickier. Mm -hmm. Okay? So let's venture over here and find ourselves... A I new, hope, a new battle. Hey, I hope you, I hope that wasn't on when you when I said that. No, it wasn't. It wasn't. Okay. If, so, uh, viewers, you were spared. Yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, okay, I want to do. Uh, let's look at forty-three. Um, forty-three is combining square root with denominator. Okay. Uh, and I'll, I'll go ahead and write it out. Yes. Um, so remember, they're asking us if f is continuous. 
what we hear, we hear what we want to hear, we're just finding the domain. Okay, so we want the domain of f of x equals, what, where is it, x minus 1 over the square root of x squared minus 1. Okay, uh, you know, in principle, this is a question you could have been asked on last final, right? Mm -hmm. um, what do we require here? Um, we need for the denominator to not be zero. Yeah. We need x squared minus one not equal to zero. That's because of denominator. And of course, the square root of zero is zero, right? Yeah. So I'm I'm skipping the square root for this consideration. Uh, we also need x squared minus 1 greater than or equal to 0. And secretly in our minds, we know that we're going to throw out the equal. But strictly speaking, let's leave it like this, because they really are two separate considerations. Um, and this is because of square root. Okay? And finally, what's very important, it's not that we need one or the other to happen. We need both yeah. to happen. So there's a big and between these two. Okay? Let's take care of the easy one first x minus 1, x plus 1 equals 0, which tells us x is not 1, x is not negative 1. All right? I think that part's kind of no big deal. The second requirement is an inequality, right? We have installed new software. Exactly. To solve inequalities, which uh, unfortunately was buggy. <laughs> On one, you know, earlier the software failed, so we had to upgrade. Mm -hmm. um, anyway, how? What are we going to do? Um, this is an inequality. The basic idea is we're going to one solve the equality, and two, test the regions. All right? I mean, I'm a greatly abbreviating it, but you know what I'm talking about, I think. Mm -hmm. All right. Solving the equality, we've actually already done that, but we'll do it again. The equality here is x minus 1 equals 0. We just did that upstairs, but... What are we testing? Well, the answers to the solutions to the equality each now reside on the number line. And I'm coloring them in because in honor of the greater than or equal to, um, we are going to include them. For yeah, now. they can be used. Exactly. E even though secretly we know they live in the denominator and we know that it actually can't be zero, yeah. but we'll take care of that later. All right. When I say, when we say test the regions, what that means is we're going to pick a point here, here, and we're going to pick a point here. Yep. So it is imperative that we actually find all of the regions. Right. Um, common mistake in this stage is to just kind of test way to the left and way to the right. But in fact, there are three regions mm -hmm. to test. Um, for the left of negative 1, let's say x is negative 100. For the middle, I like the number 0. 
And for the right, I like the number 100. Yeah. Okay? So the test for x equals negative 100 is, uh, and I'm, I'm writing it out as if, you know, there's money on the line. Um, the question is, is 10,000 minus 1 bigger than or equal to 0? Yes. Okay, so this is a big check. We're good over here, so we're, we're going to go ahead and shade that business. This is, uh, you know, big round of applause <laughs> for left of negative 1. Okay, real quick. Uh, x equals 0 is 0 squared minus 1 bigger than or equal to 0. No. Okay. Uh, these people go home penniless. Uh, yeah. The remainder of people, x equals 100. The writing is on the wall because we know that when we square 100, uh, same thing is going to happen. 10,000 minus 1. Just so happens to be bigger than 0. Uh, celebrations all around. Um, okay, let's put it all together now. The solution to this inequality that we just did is negative infinity, comma, negative 1, bracket, union, 1, comma, infinity, bracket, uh, open bracket. So but there are closed brackets initially that stem only from the inequality, but... There's this huge and, and up here we know that x cannot equal 1, and x cannot equal negative 1. Put these two together, and the brackets become uh, illegal, they get fired. And the final answer is the domain is so negative infinity, negative 1, union 1, to infinity. Yay! Okay? And this came from a combination of solving a an inequality which was not strict, but then suddenly the denominator had its say, and we had to delete yeah. these Yeah, they points. overturned our uh, right. proposal. Okay, so I think we'll leave it at this for yeah. this one. Okay?